is this is not necessarily me saving the world this is us saving the world because the situations that we're in are situations that people created and we are the people since we we cause the problem we can call we are we are the solution as well and so this is what we, we what, what I'm trying to get everyone to do for tonight and next year and the year after that but especially here tonight because you all are the ones who are here tonight to actually make this thing happen you all are the ones who are kicking this thing off. This is the first group I met with tonight, and so this is like the official start of the very first Houston Hunger and Homelessness Awareness Week. This is the official start of the very first Sleep Out Saturday. And y'all going to the championship. Hey. Um, what I think makes this successful is y'all you all being here. But what makes it grand what makes it big is what you do with it from this moment on several hours until the sun comes up cell phones anybody got cell phones add me on twitter <laughs> my name is noah rattler noah like the ark rattler like the snake it'll be it should be easy to remember noah rattler add me on twitter tonight add me tonight Tweet, as, if you're awake, tweet about tweet about your experience, uh, post it on Facebook, take little videos of yourselves, interview each other, um, make this a really well-rounded experience, because what I would like to see is all the video, a lot of the videos that you all take, go up on the website as Team TSU, that Stephanie started the site. I want you all to have a really big, heavy presence on the website. Also, anybody here, has anyone done an eye report? Anyone watch uh, CNN? Anybody watch CNN? I would like to, I would like for you, at least you two, to get up and like when you do it, when you start putting it, putting this stuff up on the internet, at two o'clock tomorrow, post the stuff on CNN's website. Because I think if we can get everybody across the city, I'm gonna tell everybody this. Post at two o'clock, everybody at the same time, post stuff up on CNN's website. If we get enough people to put it up there, they'll have to talk about it. And once it hits CNN's website, the whole world sees it. And once they talk about it, the whole world sees it. And just like that, we will have changed the world by the, just a few things that we've done. A night of cold, some sore thumbs and misspelled words because your thumbs will be cold, but you're still tweeting on the little cell phones and uploading this stuff and reporting on it. That is how we make this thing really successful. The next thing is going forward. I'm often asked, Noah, how are you going to end homelessness? They've been here forever. They're always going to be here. That's not necessarily the case. Homelessness is not a law of nature. It's just an option that we choose not to cancel out. So if we as people decide that we don't care for homelessness anymore. We don't want to allow it to be a part of our society and we take the steps that are necessary, it'll slowly start to disappear. How do I do this as a student? Mentoring kids has a lot to do with the direction the student takes. Going and visiting schools, elementary schools, just in the area. Y'all go to a couple of elementary and middle schools, anybody on step team, any organizations go and talk to the kids, that stuff really has an impact. I'm gonna tell you why. I was in the third grade. I woke up in it one day and I was looking at the news and they showed that this guy was like standing in front of the ocean on his banister. And all I remember, they said he walked from some coast to another coast. That stayed in my head and you see what I did with it. So you never can tell what your actions, how your actions will impact someone's life. And little kids, when they're in elementary school, they're really impressionable and they soak up a lot of information and what you give them, they'll soak up. So stuff like that will definitely help. You can go and volunteer at organizations like Search, um, do food drives, not just during Christmas, but do it in spring, right before Spring Fest. Because we all love to give during the holidays, but people are still homeless in the summertime. People are still homeless in the spring, in the fall. So it's an all year round thing. As a matter of fact, if you all wanted to, I can come back and, and like 
my walk is a it's like a two week discuss I mean two hour two three hour discussion so I can't really talk to you about it tonight but I can come back to the school and talk to you all about it and we can I can also help you come up with a cumulative plan to just do stuff in the community with different organizations where you would where each organization would do just a couple of examples uh, anybody in the boxing club the boxing club say y'all do in January you do a food drive. In February, you do a clothing drive. And March, you go mentor, go talk to some kids, go to three, four schools. And in April, you do a car wash. And all this stuff kind of goes to different organizations. At the same time, someone else does the same rotation, but they start in a different spot. That way you have a continuous loop of services going and, and help going to these organizations. You have a continuous supply of volunteer hours and a continuously educational experience here that's outside of what you learn in the university. And just a couple of, just off the top of my head type of thing. But we can come, I can help you all come up with a comprehensive plan to really get in this. And all of it won't be with homeless people every day. But ultimately, in the end, it'll be making our community stronger as a whole. Um, I think that's pretty much all I got to say. I appreciate you all coming out. Um, I can, what time is it? 830. I can answer a couple questions in like 10 minutes and I gotta move on to the next spot. Anybody have any questions? How long? Wait, never mind. Four and a half months. Yeah. 20 miles a day. Um, what did you risk? I had support vehicles, so like I sleep in a sport vehicle. My first support vehicle driver name is Sunshine. He has a health food restaurant over on OST, right at right by the Red Rooster, OST and uh, MLK. And uh he, he he was with me from Houston to Dallas. The second support vehicle driver name was Jaree Fuller, and she was a volunteer at Search, and she was with me from Dallas all the way to Los Angeles. And basically, what would happen is I walk like six, seven miles, and uh, and then they come meet me. I take a break, then they take off. I refill my backpack with like apples, oranges, tomatoes, and water or whatever, and then I walk off, and we just piece by piece by piece, day by day by day, all the way across the country. Slept at, at the end of the day. We pull over at a truck stop, or Walmart in the parking lot, a gas station, the shoulder, a rest area, something like that, and let it go. And I sleep, wake up in the next morning, by 10 o'clock, get on the road, 20 miles later, I stop. And that was pretty much how I went from one place to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next. Any more questions? Yes, sir. You know the thing about uh, the mental the uh, mental uh, institution here in, in the state of Texas, what they do with the homeless, with the mental patients in, in, in the state of Texas? The biggest, the best mental health facilities, I believe, in the state of Texas are in the prison. Most, most mental ill in the, in the state wind up, that's how they're treated in, in the penitentiary. Mental health, MHMRA has programs. I think that's probably the largest organization that deals with people who are not locked up. Um, they help get people who are coming out of prison and other people who get sent and um, referred to them. And different organizations help with mental illness, like Search, um, Bread of Life, all of them, they're, they're big grants that fund organizations that serve people with specific mental illnesses, dual diagnosis, so like somebody may have schizophrenia and is addicted to something, then there's a grant for that. And so different organizations do help with it, but uh, a big bulk of the mental illness treatment is done in, in prison. That question because I don't know if a lot of people are aware of this, and this 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 probably was about 20 years ago. But uh, what was happening here and in, in, right here in the city of Houston is that you have, like you were saying, you're talking about the, a lot of the homeless people have mental problems, mental issues. Right. That's where a lot of them end up. Mm -hmm. And if they go to Austin to do uh, have treatment in Austin at the mental hospital in Austin, <laughs> once a week they will bring them back here, bring them back here to Houston. What they would do is they would let them off up here at the bus stop, right, right, at, right, at, right. At, uh, the Greyhound. Now I don't know if they still do that or not, and that's because of the fact they didn't have anywhere else to put them. Right. So after right. that treatment was over with, they keep them three or four days or whatever. Every week they would bring them back and drop them off. If they didn't have people here, like their relatives or whatever, to come and meet them and pick them up, then they would just disseminate out into the street and they disseminate until. They get back into the system, either being arrested for vacancy or whatever, and then it, the cycle starts all over again. So I was right. I was wondering if, if they if they had tried to address that situation, if that's still. <coughs> I, 
Houston is that city in Texas. Like Albuquerque is that city in, in New Mexico. It's like where they send the people that they don't want. Um, to the, I guess it's because it's the biggest city. It has the most services and stuff like that. And one of the big issues, any psych majors out here? It's um, mental illness is uh, that's the that's the eight hundred pound gorilla in the room. Mental illness is mental illness is because it's so hard to get a handle on. Like now we're coming up with drugs every day that treat this and treat that, but they create this and create that. But that's not that's just kind of subsiding the, the side effects. It's it's a lot that has to go, and that's really the big issue around homelessness and incarceration. A lot of people, they either wind up on the streets. Yes, ma'am. Did you come across, like on your journey, did you come across and talk to a lot of homeless people? Because you, you did walk, so I'm sure you saw a lot of people yeah. on your trip. So, like, how did that impact you? What impacted me the most was people started looking at me like I was homeless. It happened in Dallas. Um, I walked in this restaurant. Dorit was in there, and I sat down, and, like, I noticed everybody was looking at me strange when I walked in. And then I realized they're looking at me like I would look at a panhandler, at depending on the depending on the day how I was feeling, before I knew anything about homelessness. Like they were just looking at eyes. And I was upset, but I got over it. And then I walked out and I was heading towards Fort Worth. This woman came out of came out of the house and she was trying to get in the car. And uh, she was like really rushing trying to get in the car. And I said, "Excuse me, ma'am, am I going the right way? I'm looking for Fort Worth." And she turned around and said. I'm sorry, I don't have any money. And like, I, I bust out laughing, but then it was it like hurt. It really hurt because I started to be looked at like I was home. And then later on, I started really start to meet different people who were going through different situations of homelessness. And it really it was like an educational experience because like volunteering here in the city, you only see a certain group of uh, um, a couple of different populations of the homeless population. But a lot of people never come in and get services. They just stay out there on the road, hitchhike in between from city to city. They're pretty nomadic for the most part. And like, that was an education in itself. Um, I met a couple of elderly people who were dealing with illness and staying at a shelter that was treating them bad. It was just, um, I even met a guy who had walked from Albuquerque to Tennessee and he was hitchhiking on his way back. And so it was, my real moment with homelessness was here before I even left on the wall. It was a, a night like this, but it was like really damp outside. And this guy was sleep on the ground under a sheet, not a blanket, a sheet. He had on a raggedy t-shirt, some sweatpants, and he was barefooted. And we pulled up and we were giving sandwiches and stuff out. He got up, he woke up, kind of rolled over, stood up, wiped his eye, came over here, came over to us, got a sandwich. He just went back and laid down and wrapped up under that sheet, like a fitted sheet in this weather. And that just like really made it real. He was used to it. So he had been out here long enough to where he was acclimated to living in this situation. Now there's several different ways you can look at that, but like that made me understand like, wow, this is really, really real. And it's real in a way that I didn't expect to see the issue. And so, oh, and another woman, um, four generations. She's been homeless since 52. Her daughter was homeless because she was raised on the street. Her daughter was homeless because she was raised on the street. And, and the last girl had just had a baby. So it was four generations of homeless. And it was like an institutionalized homelessness because they never came off the streets. And I, that, that like hit me pretty hard. That was really deep. And they took the baby from the youngest one because she was on the street. And so now she in the system. And it's hard for somebody who grows up in the system to come out. So, yeah, that was like the heavy part. That was like the heavy part for me. Yes, sir. Walking through the desert. You know, the most pain, the light. By that time, going 23, 24 miles a day, there's a, um, it was the most peaceful time of my life, I think. It was like a very sublime peace that I felt out there. And it was like a combination. It was something that had grew over the entire time. And once I was there, when I, I knew it was my favorite time because when I left, it was like really hard to adjust back to being in the city. I was claustrophobic. Um, it was hard to be around people. There's too much stuff going on. 
And it was like it was almost like I had been kind of cleansed of all the busyness and the the schedules and the day-to-day -day rush, 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 rush. And it was just me. 